Hey, it's Mr. Allred, and we're going to talk about exponential functions. Uh, the first thing is to address what an exponential function is, which is an easy statement. Um, it's a function where the input variable is in the exponent position. So we've had things that were squared or to roots, um, but those were always given. The unknown was the base. But here's the example that I'm going to kind of give you to start with. f of x equals 7 times 0.35 raised to the x. So in that case, the number that we would plug in for x in the function that would change would be uh, in the exponent position. Okay, not the base always being squared or always be taken the square root of, but... Um, the actual exponent would change. So sometimes it would be squared, sometimes it would be cubed, sometimes it could be square root or cube root. So that's the, the difference. And as we go through some of the um, lectures coming up, there's a few things uh, you need to know. Um, you should go back or ask about how to enter exponents and roots in your calculator because we're going to get some numbers we're not familiar with at all. Um, and the way we can um, kind of determine whether or not those numbers are reasonable or really ascertain how big they are would be to run them through the calculator. Um, and since uh, everybody has different types of calculators, there's no one way for me to show you how to do that. So if you're familiar with your calculator and can actually do these already as we go through and get the answers I'm showing you, good. Good for you. Um, if you can't, reach out to me and if I start to see the same type of calculator or the same type of problem I'll try and put something together that'll help uh, lots of people but I can help you individually as well but the important thing is to go through the video here and all the videos and make sure you're getting the right answers so if you're understanding the material but you can't get the number back that you want then we do need to talk about it. so please 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 reach out um, and it's also a good idea to consistently use the same calculator. So you don't want to um, use one at home and then borrow one from somebody else later um, in the semester when you uh, may not be familiar with it. So um, keep the same one so you'll get used to how to use it and can enter the same things in correctly over and over. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump into these exponential functions um, here. I've got two uh, functions graphed. The first one is a linear function. It's a y equals mx plus b, uh, y equals 2x plus 3. So over here, this function um, graphs a straight line. So you may remember that you could take uh, this thing here. It has a y-intercept of 3, and then it has a slope of 2. So um, it would go up 2 over 1, up 2 over one so make sure you're looking down here this is one this is two three four five six seven make sure you're following along there um, but that's what we'd have we would have um, for that one there we would have m equals two and we would have the the b equal three for the y-intercept and because the slope is consistent it makes a nice straight line whereas over here with the exponential function I've got y equals 2 to the x let me just make a small little table of some inputs outputs that would be kind of common uh, we could plug in 0 2 to the 0 or anything to the 0 is 1 that was a definition basically when we talked about exponents plug in 1 2 to the first would be 2 so here's 1 there's 2 so two points make a straight line, but the next point we plug in will be an x of 2. 2 squared is 4. Um, and then the next point we plug in will be 3. 2 cubed is 8, which is way up here. So you can see they're on this curve, and you couldn't make a straight line, because if you tried to connect any two points on here, you would miss the other two that I've got so far. Um, so exponentials make a, a curve. I mean, it may look a little bit like a um, quadratic to you right now, but the other side does not do the same thing. It doesn't have that symmetry that quadratics have. Okay. Um, but the idea here is that the linear functions grow at the same rate the whole time. This one here was going up to over one every step. Where this one here, the first time it went up one over one, the next time it went up two over one, next time it went up 4 over 1, 
Um, so it has a ratio, not a consistent growth. Okay. So let's write, uh, well, let's look at a couple of uh, functions here. I've got the growth and decay formulas. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get to use them um, throughout this video. But the first one here is for population. This is the way the book gives it to you. Um, P of T equals P sub zero times A T. A to the T, excuse me. So in all these cases, um, T is an input for time. So usually if we're talking about population, it might be years, but... Uh, depending on what the population represents. I mean, it could be days or months. Um, I mean, if we're talking about animals, some reproduce really quickly. Um, PT, uh, P of T, which is kind of like the Y value, that's the output, so that's the ending amount. Um, P sub zero or P naught, the initial P value here. Uh, this uh, guy, that's the starting population, and A is a rate. And that will usually be in decimal form if you're trying to think of something um, similar to a percent. But you don't have to think of a percent. Um, pretty much the same formula over here, just using different variables, is the radioactive decay formula. Um, a of t equals a sub zero times a to the t. And notice there's big a's and little a's, which are definitely different. Um, everything means exactly the same uh, as far as position goes. T is still a time. Radioactive decay could be, depending upon the material, years, millions of years, or even uh, seconds if it's um, uh, humanly constructed material. Um, A of T is the output. Uh, A sub zero is the starting amount. It says stating amount. Let's uh, just leave that alone. We'll fix it later. Um, and A, uh, little a, is the rate. Okay, so let's go through and try and set up a couple of uh, functions using uh, these models. See what we can do. Oh, my picture's in the way, so let's move me. All right, here's an example. A county has a population of 2350 um, in 1980 and 4570 in 1995. Assuming exponential growth, write the function to calculate future population and then use the function to predict the population in 2005. So we're doing population here. So I'm going to write that formula out here. P of T equals P sub zero times little a raised to the T. Now they don't have, give us everything um, that goes in the formula, but they give us enough to answer the question. So let's kind of look at what we've got here. It says that if we want to kind of work toward this, the things that we have is a starting population, uh, which will be 2350. And we have an ending population, which is basically the population after 15 years. So let's go ahead and make that obvious. The output is 4570. And that is from a T equaling 15. So if we try and put all this in here, Let's see what we have. We have 4570 equals uh, the starting amount 2350 times A. We don't know the rate to the 15. So in this case, we're just kind of setting up the function uh, with everything that we know so that maybe we can get some more information for it. <clears throat> so what we want to do here is we're trying to write a function in this um p of t equals format where we would know the starting amount which we do and we'd also know the rate and then we could plug in a time like the 2005 time period to calculate the ending amount but we don't have the rate we're missing the little a here but we do have the tools to find that we've solved bases before so the first thing i would say we'd do here would be divide out this 2350 it may not give us a nice number, but we'll divide it out. I got my calculator. Um, so 4750 divided by, excuse me, 47, ugh, 4570 divided by 2350 gives me, and I'm going to have to round off here, so I'm going to use a couple of decimals. So let's see here, 1.9447. Uh, if you're doing online work, it will tell you exactly how many decimals to use. That's where I'm going to round right now. Um, equals A to the 15. 
So if you think back to solving some <clears throat> um, equations that we have tried to get rid of roots or um, maybe had some simple cases where we got rid of squares and uh, x squared equals, uh, we could take the root of both sides here. So I'm going to take, so this is a to the 15 to get rid of it, I'm going to take the 15th root. And I have to do that on both sides to make it work out evenly. So that means on the right hand side, a to the 15, and I take the 15th root, just gives me a. Now I've got to take this thing I've got right there in front of me, and I've got to take the 15th root. So there's various ways you can do that. You can either raise it to the 1 over 15 power, or you can use a root button. Um, but I'm going to take it to four decimal places again, and if you need help, as I said, trying to get the right number out of here, um, 1.0453, uh, then let me know. Okay, and I'll help you get there. You might want to send me a picture of your calculator so I'll know what you're working with. Okay, but what we get there is we get the A value in this formula. So we can go back with the things that we know and the things that are consistent. So P of T, which is an output, equals the starting amount, which isn't going to change, 2350, times the rate, which we now have is 1.0453, raised to the T, which would be our amount of time. So that's our population function for this problem. So when we pick a time that we want to put in here, however many years, it will tell us the population after that amount of time. Okay. So if we put 15 in here, we should get back around 4570. Uh, since we rounded, it may not be exact. But let's see here. We had the question of what's the population going to be in 2005? So let's say in 2005, let t be what? So we're, our function starts in 1980. And I don't know if I explained, but when I went to 1995, I used 15 because that was 15 years later. So I'm going to look at and say how many years after 1980 is 2005. And I can simply subtract them if I like. And it would be 25. 25 years since 1980. So my function starts calculating from 1980 for, forward. So let's see here. We're going to do the calculation. We're going to plug in the 25, not 2005. That'll break your calculator for sure. Um, but we're going to plug in 25. Once again, if you need help with your calculator, try a little bit, do a little research. And if it's not working and you're not consistently getting what we're doing here, um, reach out and let me know. And depending on where you round and when you round and how much you round, your answer could um, deviate from what we got quite a bit. So I get P of 25, and I'm going to talk about people here. So I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, 7114. Um, so more or less what we're saying is in 2005 we predict the population to be 7,114. So that's 25 years after we had the initial <clears throat> population um, uh, count. And we need both those 1980 and um, 1995 data to help us get that A. Sometimes that A will be given to us. Sometimes we'll just be given a function and we're just ready to go plug everything in. But I do want to make sure you understand the things that we're looking for. All right. We'll do some more examples in the following videos. Thank you.